Hello, I'm Todd DeSando, an Associate Director of Learning Delivery here at VILS. Welcome to the Coach Preview for Digital Collaboration Learning Experience 3. Learning Experience 3 builds upon the foundations created in Learning Experience 1 and 2. For teachers new to the school, it's important to have them complete the onboarding process inside of the academy. For teachers who are new or did not attend Learning Experience 1 or Learning Experience 2, the recording of those sessions are linked in the digital handouts for your building that you received from your VILS point of contact during the live webinar. Just like you registered for this session, registration links will continue to be used by participants in Learning Experience 3. The registration link will be included in the digital handout and the Academy invite, and once registered, the Zoom link will be emailed to the participants with a calendar invite. Please do not forward that email to any other person. It is custom for you. Simply share the registration link in the digital handout and the Academy. The live learning objectives for Digital Collaboration Learning Experience 3 are as follows. Describe the benefits of global collaboration. Explore how to use the online global collaboration taxonomy to facilitate global collaboration. Celebrate our journey of facilitating digital collaboration this year in our classrooms. Since this is our final learning experience of the year with you, we want to take a moment to reflect on the journey our VILS community has taken this past year. We'll be showing a short video compilation of some of the highlights that you have shared with us. As you watch the video, we ask attendees to take a moment to think about what resonates with them. We're going to start the learning experience off with a waterfall activity reflecting on the video that was just shown. We're going to take about one minute for reflection before we jump right into the discussion of global collaboration and to start to build out what our perception of global collaboration within an educational context looks like. This will be introduced through the use of an example, non-example protocol. During this activity, we will pose several different scenarios to the attendees and ask them to decide whether the scenario given is either an example or non-example of digital collaboration. Attendees will be instructed to make note of the scenarios that they feel are examples. After the example non-example activity, we will break into smaller groups to complete two additional tasks. First, attendees will share and discuss the presented scenarios and which ones they selected as examples of global collaboration and why. Then they'll discuss some similarities and differences in their responses. Second, as a group, they will define global collaboration in their own words. Think about what rule you used when deciding whether or not an example can be considered global collaboration. Groups will then share their definition with the at-large group. After having had a chance to share their conceptions of global collaboration, we will review the scenarios once again and talk through whether or not they fit the definition of global collaboration. Next, we'll introduce ISTE's definition of global collaboration, which according to ISTE is global collaborators using digital tools to broaden their perspectives and enrich their learning by collaborating with others and working effectively in teams locally and globally. And then we'll transition into the why, specifically looking at how do students benefit from global collaboration? We will set the stage using this quote from an EdWeek article. Global collaboration builds cultural understanding, empathy, and helps develop important communication and problem-solving skills. We will then bring in the TIM in the global collaboration context, explaining that using technology tools to facilitate collaboration with peers outside experts and others is a way to accomplish that goal. Leading into a quick pause and debrief activity, reflecting on the question, what indicators do you see in students that collaboration is building cultural understanding, empathy, and developing important communication and problem solving skills? Next, we will introduce the five levels of the online global collaboration taxonomy. While we introduce the taxonomy, we will be engaging in the four C's thinking routine. Attendees will use either a pencil and paper or a provided digital template of a graphic organizer. 
As we make our way through the five levels within the taxonomy, we will ask the attendees to stop and jot down their thoughts to the four C's questions. After we review all levels within the taxonomy, we will take another minute to jot down our final thoughts and then go into breakout rooms to dis discuss. Again, as we go through the five levels within the taxonomy, we ask attendees to reflect and jot down their initial thoughts to those four C questions. That graphic organizer will aid us in diving into the five levels of the online global collaboration taxonomy. We will introduce each of the levels, discussing the mode, the purpose, and a real world example of each level. During the discussion on each level, the chat will be used to allow attendees to openly add their input concerning their own personal usage of each of the levels. Once we have reviewed all five levels of the online global collaboration taxonomy, attendees will take a moment to record any final thoughts that they may have to the four C's questions on their graphic organizer, and then debrief as a whole group using these sentence starters to complete our discussion. As we begin to close out our session, we will transition into a small group discussion activity where we will start with a breakout room share out and then move on to a reflection using a thinking routine. With one minute, three minute, and 15 minute breakdowns to facilitate discussion about individual reflection and a structured group share, followed by a three minute whole group debrief. To close out, we will engage in a dice debrief where attendees will roll a digital dice and answer the questions that correspond with what they roll. This leads us to the transition point, going from the live learning experience to the self-guided learning experience. After the completion of the live learning experience, attendees will go into the Bills Academy to complete the self-guided portion of Learning Experience 3. In Learning Experience 3, the learning objectives of the self-guided course are to describe strategies that teachers can employ to allow students to access experts and peers in other locations and to identify collaborative technology tools that they can use to facilitate collaboration between students, peers, experts, and others. Throughout the self-guided portion, there is a guiding question that teachers can use to address their learning. What can I do to make my classroom more globally collaborative and connected? What digital tools and collaborative technologies can I use to facilitate this level of collaboration? Teachers would then have the opportunity to choose their learning path. They may either choose to learn more about making connections and collaborating with others via video in my classroom, or if they're ready to apply their learning and connect my classroom to others via video, they may apply that. The Learn It portion of the self-guided allows for teachers to prepare students for video exchanges. This section addresses why global exchanges should be used in the classroom, how do you set up and prepare your students for video collaborations? How to connect or find an expert or another classroom to connect with? How to prepare your students for the call? How to test your tech to make sure it's ready to go? And what to do with your classroom after the call is over? Once this is finished, they will be instructed to share their thoughts on the VILS Academy. Once teachers complete the Learn It section, they will move into the Do It section. Teachers will choose one of the following three activities to implement their practices immediately. Challenge one, host a virtual guest speaker. Challenge two, register for a live event. Or challenge three, have students collaborate with another class. This challenge completes the end of the course. After teachers complete the learn it and do it section, they will move into the coach follow-up, the final portion of the learning experience. The coach follow-up is in the Bills Academy as well. The required task is to share what you implemented with your coach and include an artifact and some context around the choices made in the implementation. If you get to share within a PLC or engage in a coaching cycle with your Bills coach, that's some bonus points. And that's learning experience three the three components, live, self-guided, and share it and show it.